Hi guys, it's Amy and you have found Amy Loves Crochet. Thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate you clicking on my videos. I've got a project to share with you today that um, I have been eyeing and wanting to do for some time, but took me a hot minute to step outside my comfort zone and work on this. So I'm glad that I did. Um, I don't know that it turned out like I expected it to, so let's just let's just jump right on into it. It is from my crochet one skein wonder book. Um, and I have, I, I really like this book because it breaks down patterns all the way from lace weight all the way through bulky. Um, and I've been through the book a bajillion times and I want to take on certain projects based on my mood. Um, <laughs> sometimes I want to, sometimes I don't. So anyway, so here is the picture of what I was trying to make. <laughs> it's a little Tunisian pouch, a little drawstring pouch. And um, I kind of, I made something similar from, um, I think it was in bulky weight a few months back, maybe a year ago, I'm not sure now. Um, I think Tiffany Hansen was the one that I was watching. Maybe not. It was a strip. You take strips, you do a, you crochet a strip, and then you put the ends together and sew them together, and it makes the bottom of this bag. So what I chose to use for mine is, um, it is a size three DK weight. It is um, Baby Bee's Sweet Delight in this cobalt color, which is gorgeous. This is 60% um, acrylic and 40% polyamide. Each of these hanks or skeins will give you 377 yards and you're suggested to use a 4.5 millimeter hook for it. With this, I paired it with um, Bernat Softy Baby in this variegated blues and white and browns. The colorway is called Little Boy Blue. This is also a size three, but it's 100% acrylic. And this will give you 310 yards in one skein. So I'm not sure where I got these. Um, I've had this for some time, I do believe. Now this one, I can tell I got from the Hobby Lobby sale. And I also have this one in, um, I got these at different times. I think I got this blue one first. I had that one by itself. And then I saw these two other colors at a different clearance sale. So I got them so that I could put the three of those together. And for this project, I happened to grab that with this one. So anyway. So, um, so I'll show you like the little flowers. I made the little flowers right. And the book is not, I like instruction that teaches me to think with my head, right? Um, you don't necessarily, sometimes you want it spelled out though. And in this case, I think I'm, I wanted it spelled out because it says when you make the strings to just weave them in. And then I was like pulling and nothing was happening. So I had to look at a different bit or look at a, a video to figure out how you do the drawstrings to make them pull the bag closed. Um, but the gauge doesn't tell me normally when a gauge, it gauge tells you how many stitches and how many rows so that you get the full size for that. The gauge on this just says 15 stitches equals two and a half inches. So although I might have had my count right, I don't know what my height and width were supposed to be. So I don't know if I came up on the right gauge to this or not. So I referenced the other bag that I made um, from, I think, Tiffany Hansen because I changed the length of the strips and then the bag was wonky. So I don't know if it's just the way the bag is supposed to be because it, I got wonky again. It was wonky again. So it's this kind of an idea where you put the strips together and then sew them up. And I don't know what happened. <laughs> I did enjoy the Tunisian aspect. I really did. Now, I think that um, one thing about the Tunisian, and it made me think of, is this why I didn't like the idea of knitting or, or trying to knit? I mean, I did try once, I promise. Um, I don't like my hands on the project, on the yarn. When you crochet, you have just the working yarn and you hold the hook. All of the rest of the projects is down below you. 
with the Tunisian, my like I felt like my hand was on my project and my little grubby mitts. Like I didn't like that idea. So I felt like I was holding it like, you know, my my Tunisian crochet hook is down here and I'm holding it way down here like I'm conducting an orchestra or something. It was not pleasant hand feel. Um, but I did the project and I'm super excited that I did a Tunisian project ever. And, um, I really, really like the way that it turned out. So here's my little bag. And when you pull the drawstring, it, clo it closes up. So the, um, Tunisian look is beautiful. I love the way that that looks, you know, when it turns out and I have since found um, lots of other videos. I thought that Tunisian was just the only way that you could do it. Like this was, it, it all looked like this. But of course, Tony from TL Yarn Crafts shows you all kinds of different stitches, all kinds of different stitches that I, I didn't know that you could do with Tunisian. You know, when you don't know, you just don't know. But now that I know, I'm so excited to, to know more. So here's where at the bottom, you know, you, you sew this bottom end of the strip to the side of the next one kind of thing. But then the rest of the strip comes up and when you do this, the section where the edges, I don't know how to show it to you. It's not, it doesn't lay flat for me to show it to you. <laughs> um, but on the sides here, you do this, you know, single rows and, and then you do some shells. So here, okay. So you do some single rows, uh, I mean, um, single crochet rows, and then you do some rows where you skip some so that you can do your weaving in and out. And then you do this shell row up on top. So, I, you know, I, I know I followed the instructions, up, but whether or not the ta the strips were the right length to make that work, I don't know. But it's pretty cool because like when you open it up, it's not just a pouch. It's like kind of flat, like you could fit a lot of stuff in there. So I'm excited that I did it. I don't know if it's really what it's supposed to be or not, but it's cute. It's cute. And then like with the string, what do you do with the strings? Like, I don't know. It was like a weird thing. I don't know. I don't know what, what application, how to use it. Like, do you just put goodies in it and then put that in another bag? You're not like, this is, you're not carrying this like a little purse or something. I don't know. There you go. Happy that I made it. Did it turn out like I expected? Who knows? But I do want to make another Tunisian project. I did get out one of my mom's hooks. I have it here to share it with you. So what I used on that is just a boy hook. Just a, a, you know, the aluminum hooks that are no ergonomic changes to it. But I did pull out this one. This was my mom's. And it's got a crochet hook on both ends. So I thought I might try that for the Tunisian. And it was like, la, 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 la. <laughs> I don't get that. I don't get that. So anyway, you know, I have got all these knitting needles from her, from my mom's. If I'm ever going to knit, knit, I'm going to have quite a few to choose from. So... All right, guys, I did give this thing another try and um, actually wanted to work on a half double crochet stitch. I saw that and thought that, you know, that's in the revolution of things. You start with a single crochet and you go to a half double crochet. So um, I, what's really important to me is not only how to learn how to do something, and this just goes for anything in life. Anybody can learn how to do something, right? Um, it's when things go off kilter, how do you get back on track? And that's the place that I really wanted to learn from this. You know, the idea of losing your stitches or dropping stitches from a knitting project has always kind of stuck out in my mind. So when I started working on this Tunisian, the single crochet style seemed very, very easy. The half double crochet style should seem equivalently easy if you know how to do a half double crochet. But for some way, somehow, some way along the way, I was losing a loop. I'm not sure how. I was very, very specific. I was watching what I was doing very, very closely. 
Um, and when you're pulling through all three loops like you do with a half double crochet, it should look a certain way on here. And then I was noticing it didn't look that way. So I thought I dropped some. So then I tried to go back and unload my stitches and reload my stitches and things went wonky. So here's my first attempt and you can see it's very clear right in here. Sorry about the sun. You know me, I got to select my filming times just appropriately, but you can even see it from far off. Something went wrong right about here. And you can see when I get up close, like this is the way they're supposed to look. And then something went wrong. So I kept this to show to you and I'm going to frog it out and then have that yarn. But this was, whoops, this was um, a sugar wheel from Hobby Lobby in these great yellow, green, pink, blue, gray colors. This one's called From the Garden. And I've got another one. So I worked on that and I thought, okay, I'm just gonna sit that to the side and I'm gonna go again and I'm gonna focus. <laughs> I mean, I was really focusing before, so I don't know how it happened. Um, and I took pictures along the way and I was gonna learn this and I was gonna show you guys. And I started a whole nother thing and somewhere along the lines, I immediately see I get wonky. So I got this far in it and it's a really nice, you can see little spots here and there where it, where my messes, mess up or mess ups are like, I don't know how, but then I came to here and I was certain I was able to see where I was dropping or how I was losing it. I mean, I count that I'm pulling through three, but when you're supposed to do the walk back through the first, you know, the, the first row or the, the first direction, um, I, my line, my loops were not where they were supposed to be for me to pick them up again. So if you look like right here at the edge, you pick up your straight line. <laughs> when you're coming back this way, you pick up this straight line and then this first one that's leaning away from him. So those are the three loops for that stitch. And somehow when I get to over here, somewhere where was I like right here this here's my three stitches for that stitch my three loops for that stitch and two of them are supposed to be on this side see how I've got two little loops on this side two of those loops are supposed to be on this side of this bar so I don't know how I got flipped turned upside down <laughs> like Will Smith in the Prince Bel Air <laughs> I don't know how I got worked around but then I get back on track see these out of those three, I've got two on this side again. So I don't know what happened. And I was almost in tears. Like when you're so focused on something and you know you're doing it right and you know you can't figure out what that bleepity bleep just happened. So I'm certainly going to frog all this back. Um, I thought I would just make like a, a panel purse and sew up the edges. I really wanted to make this work, but I don't know. Look how far away you can see the mistakes. And I thought, well, I'll just keep on trucking. And I was supposed to have 28 stitches. And by the time I got to this row, this was my final. This was the straw that broke the back. Um, I only have 26 stitches on this row and this big old hunkin' hole. So when you start at the first, when you start going back across this way, like I missed that one. And to think I am unable to go back. You know, with crochet, you can frog to a certain mistake and then just pick it up and go keep going. But I was not able to do that with this Tunisian crochet, <laughs> half double crochet. If that's something that can be done and I just need to master that skill, we'll consider it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna learn how to fix a mistake that is gonna drive me insane. But even like on the back, it's such a great, you can see that row right there where I tried to like fudge through whatever was happening. I don't, I don't get it. As I'm pulling through, you know, the walk back across, I see all through loop, all three loops. I'm pulling through all three loops and then somehow my two were on that side instead of that side. So I am trying. I am not giving up. You guys can see that. I, I want you to continue to try as well. Things are going to happen. You'll learn through it. You'll, you'll figure it out. And if not, don't, not every stitch is for everyone. I have to let go of things like that and not be so hard on myself sometimes because maybe this just isn't for me and that's okay. But I did want to learn it. I did want to do it successfully. I did use the conductor stick. <laughs> that is um, not as bad as it felt in the first place. 
my hand trying to hold onto the boy hook when I was doing the little tapestry bag. I was only doing, I think, 14 uh, stitches. And so my hand was like <clears throat> trying to hold and pull my tension through. So I have to keep stopping during this Tunisian trick and <laughs> shake out my fingers that are falling asleep because I'm holding stuff too tight. So that's kind of a drawback. I don't know if I enjoy that part of it at all, but I really do want this to work out because it feels amazing. And if I'm not ever going to get to knitting on a normal basis, then this certainly would be something that I would like to pick up. And I just don't know. I just don't know if there's maybe one that is not this long. Maybe I need ones with the cables. Maybe that feels a little bit better. I don't know, but I'm glad I tried Tunisian and I'm glad I tried a second stitch as well. So that's what I've got to share with you today. I've got some other projects um, that I'm working on. I'm super excited about. So sometimes my table is very bare because I don't have enough to talk about. Um, and so I need to be creative with where I share with you. Um, other times I have got tons of completed projects and I just have to categorize them to share with you accordingly. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time. I do sincerely appreciate you so much. Have a wonderfully blessed day and please come back and see me again. Thank you. Bye-bye. I have a little project that I have been wanting to make for some time and stepped outside my comfort zone and finally did a Tunis Tunisian. <laughs>